All right, so just a quick video. I spend my life, it feels like, making videos about fixing my pool heaters and, uh, and fixing my central air conditioning and, and car stuff. But the thing I know the most about career-wise, I never make any videos about. So I'm just going to make a quick one. I'm a dentist in, in real life. Uh, I treat kids only. But I'm going to show you something that it seems like nobody knows about. Not a single parent ever has any idea. Uh, when they come from another dentist and they want a second opinion, and they say somebody found cavities or they saw cavities on an x-ray, nobody has any idea about what a cavity looks like. Uh, they just bring me an x-ray and they have nobody's ever taken the time to show them what a cavity looks like and why you get one and stuff like that so I'm just gonna quickly go over with actually my own kids x-rays so I'm not pulling up any any person any strangers x-rays uh, what a cavity looks like uh, primarily genetic unfortunately some people get cavities some people don't I mean I've been doing this 25 years and it seems like some people do not just are awful brushers have horrible hygiene we take x-rays they never get a cavity other kids do great job when i say kids i see them up to like 27 28 uh they do a great job brushing they do everything right and they still wind up getting cavities in between their teeth so there's a really high genetic component to decay uh, that's something a lot of people are surprised when they hear uh, it's just what I've seen, uh, you know, you can do everything right and still wind up with cavities. It's like cholesterol You know, there are people that eat uh, You know all kinds of cheese and, and unhealthy stuff and, and their cholesterol is 130 Then there's the other kind of people that eat just wheat germ and their cholesterol is 300 and they need medication So anyway without further BS. All right. I don't know how well this is gonna come out But I'm gonna give it my best All right so basically I'll see if I can zoom in uh, without too much reflection. All right, so this is uh, an x-ray, all right? What you a typical tooth, a typical tooth has three parts to it, and an x-ray is based on light and dark. So a typical tooth has three different shades. The edge of every tooth is white on an x-ray. White signifies something that's very hard. So the edge of every tooth is enamel. Okay, the second layer in from the edge is dentin. It's not as hard as the enamel, but it's not as soft as the dark part. And the dark on an x-ray is soft. So the middle of every tooth is where the nerve is. So it's hollow, almost like a cactus. So, and what you can see in this digital x-ray is even the little plastic sticker sensor that she was biting on. It's soft, so much softer than the surrounding areas. So basically, I tell patients a tooth is like an egg. You have enamel, which is like the egg shell, the dentin, which is like the egg white, and then the nerve, which is like the egg yolk. So what all you're looking for in an x-ray or typically where the teeth touch each other, we don't care about this, where the teeth are touching each other in the scent, right? Those little dark dots. Why dark? Dark because it's softer than the surrounding area. And there's a lot of reflection on this. But if you take a look at this picture, now this is from a long time ago, see this big giant dark area compared to the rest of this? This is a fairly big cavity right here. And it's close to the nerve of the tooth. It, with these digital x-rays especially, you have to stand back and look. It's much easier to see. If, you, if I take this way back here, you can maybe catch, uh, I'm trying to look at the monitor, a little dark dot right there. Little dot right there, little dot right there. Those are all cavities, little dot right there. Now, if you look carefully at something like this, this one ends right here. It doesn't go all the way through the outer layer of the tooth into this second grade of gray. So this is not really a cavity yet. This is reversible. Same thing, now these are really close. This one's through and this one ends right about there. So. In my world, I wouldn't treat this tooth because this is not through the enamel and this is not through the enamel. What you do is you have somebody floss, use a fluoride rinse, and you retake the x-ray and you cross your fingers. Uh, sure, especially on a baby tooth. Uh, what a filling looks like is this. So how do you fix something on the side of the tooth? Let me get out of here and I'll show you. Uh, let's fast forward. 
and again, these all, these all fell out. These are all primary teeth. What you do is you make like an L. So you have to drill through the top of the tooth, obviously, but you get the side of the tooth like that, okay? Same thing, you do the side, okay? To get to the side, you kind of drill through the top and make just like a little, a little box. You can be elaborate, you can make, you can go over here and, and go across and go down and take away all this, but the more conservative you are, the better off. Um, let's see what else we got. So basically you're looking at an x-ray, all you're looking for is right where the teeth touch each other, any little dark dots. And that would, that would be something softer than the surrounding area. Uh, when the dentist takes a little tooth counter and, or explorer and feels, they're feeling the biting surfaces. So you can physically feel something on the biting surface, but you can't feel or see anything where the teeth touch each other. These little areas would be equivalent to if you pulled the tooth out and looked on the side of it. There'd be like a little hole there or a little white patch. Um, so, that's, so that's that. So again, you have enamel on the outer edge, dentin second layer in, hollow nerve in the center, and uh, a filling, and these are composite or plastic fillings. So they're not as dark as what a metal, metal filling would look like. Uh, fast forward here, if you look, now these are a little grainy, but if you look carefully, let me see if this helps going in. Little area there, little area there. And what we were taught in dental school, which is what is true, is they're almost like a triangle in shape. So they start out on the outside of the tooth large, and then they slowly come to a point until they get to dent in the second layer, then they get larger again. Uh, all a root canal is, is when you clean out the nerve of the tooth, okay? In a baby tooth, you can't do a root canal, but that's not really, neither here nor there. Um, where's that, where's that tooth that I, I wound up pulling out that one that had the large, that large cavity. I mean, a bunch, this is years and years ago. Uh, all a root canal is, in a baby tooth anyway, is something like this, where you clean out the cavity into the nerve of the tooth. So in a baby tooth like this, if you did a pulpotomy or a nerve removal, partial nerve removal, you drill into here, clean just that out, and fill that in. The problem with a nerve uh, treatment in a baby tooth is you can't take out the whole nerve. You could only take out part of the nerve, and a lot of times they're not successful, but that's another story. Uh, all right, one more little quickie. I hear about impacted wisdom teeth, impacted, impacted, impacted. All right. So here's a typical set of teeth. This is a panoramic x-ray. This kind of x-ray, since it's scanning and moving, doesn't show cavities. It shows position of where everything is. So the wisdom teeth are the very last four teeth. This is another one of my kids here. Uh, all impacted means is that it can't come in. You can have fully impacted, where like a wisdom tooth is completely sideways. It can be partially impacted. If you look, remember what I said before, dark is soft. So this wisdom tooth over here, see this whole big dark area? That's a little infection with this wisdom tooth. And if you look in her mouth, this tooth is now gone because she had it taken out. But the gums are somewhere around here covering the tooth up. So you can't see, this is under the gums, this is under the gums, and that's under the gums. But these two were partially in and they had no room to come up. Here's the jawbone, right there. So this was, cut. If there has to be room behind the last tooth and in front of the jaw for the tooth to totally come up. Why do you take out wisdom teeth? You take them out because potentially, first of all, if they're partially impacted like this and partially in the mouth, you can get an infection like this and it can become a, a large infection. Uh, teeth that are uninterrupted like this, you really should take out anyway. They say that there's a small percentage of them that could become cancerous. Again, uh, you know, aggressive is not necessarily so good. However, way easier to take out a wisdom tooth in somebody 18, 19, 20, 21 years old than waiting until you have a problem when you're 50. Recuperation's way better. My daughter had all four of those out. One of my good friends in, in uh, Syosset nearby took out all four of her wisdom teeth. She wanted to be put out. They put her to sleep. Probably about a half an hour tops procedure. Uh, went, went really well. 
uh, maybe a couple of days she was sore, didn't need any kind of medication. I mean, it, it went very smoothly. Uh, most of the time they do. Once in a blue moon you have a dry socket or something like this where the clot comes out and it can be uncomfortable for a couple of weeks. So I always tell people, make sure you have some time off uh, just in case afterwards. But that's basically it. When you're looking at an x-ray, you're looking light versus dark. Dark is soft, light is hard, and you're looking for any little shading differences. It's not the same as the x-ray of somebody's you know, stomach if, if they swallowed like a, a screwdriver, something ridiculous like that where you see a big screwdriver. That's obvious and that's impressive. Cavities are little small dots. You have to wear <laughs> glasses. You have to be look very carefully and they don't hurt. Okay, that's the last, my parting, my parting words, if anybody's actually watching this is, how can I have a cavity? Nothing hurts. Cavities don't hurt unless they're gigantic. All right, so if you have a, if you have a cavity hurting, you got a problem. Uh, a cavity is something somebody will see on an x-ray that you take care of preventatively so that it doesn't hurt. If it's through the enamel into the dentin, it just keeps going and going until it gets to the nerve. If you catch them tiny, which is why we suggest going to the dentist regularly, if you catch them tiny and they're not through the enamel, you can reverse them. I have my patients floss, I have them use a fluoride rinse, I retake the x-rays in six months, and there are people who I've been watching these things for 10 years and there's been no change, and you leave them like that, at least I do. You wanna find somebody conservative who's not running to treat every single little dot. You know, the only problems I ever have with other dentists are the ones that are extre extremely aggressive. But it's like that in any field. You have an aggressive car repair person, you have an aggressive, aggressive HVAC guy that comes in, or gal that comes in and wants to sell you a new system when all you need is a capacitor. You know, that's how I am in my everyday life. You know, we had uh, one of these uh, sterilizers broke that I have over here, and, and they wanted $1,800 to fix the sterilizer. I went crazy because I thought it was an inexpensive part. And luckily we have two of them, so I used the one. I bought the $60 part, and it's been fixed for two years now. I fixed it myself. But again, could have paid $1,800 to have unnecessary stuff done. So when you find a dentist, find somebody conservative. Goodbye. Yeah,